the students are taking a second example now on for logic uh, for the first video I've prepared so it's the second one and obviously the example I mentioned to you which is related to risk assessment of risk in, a, in this case a software engineering project so you'll find actually it's from the uh, one of the recommended texts for the module artificial intelligence a guide to intelligent systems so this example is taken from there so you could uh, refer of course the textbook to get more details from this example so this could be sort of a second example uh, out of field of engineering so the first example we look at was in the uh, in the control of an air conditioning system using the target and prohibiting temperature and getting a command that tells that can inform or be used to control a, a, the control of the air conditioning system be it for cooling, heating, or doing the change. So this one is going to look at assessing risk in a software engineering project. And uh, it's quite a simplistic case here. And we find the doing process will be used are project funding and the project staffing, of course, output would be the level of risk involved. So as we've seen in the previous uh, uh, presentation, so we have to create membership functions for the inputs and the one output and once we've done that we also have to set a rule set and uh, once you have defined these two so membership functions and the rule set to relate your inputs to your output then we are able now to process actually our real life data and actually get outputs so first step is to convert the crisp output so let's look at the membership function first before coming to the actual crisp data we'll be using to assess the level of risk so in this case, uh, we are saying here, first input we mentioned was project funding. So this is your linguistic input variable and its values are inadequate, marginal and inadequate. So in the case we're seeing here project funding, of course, relates to the amount of money uh, a, a particular group or company has. And this would one put to assess the level of risk. So it's inadequate, marginal and adequate. So if you look at the membership function for Project funding, you can see on the x-axis here, that's the percentage you can say. So this is zero percent here, hundred percent. So you could always scale up or you could normalize. Uh, easy to calculate the percentage, you could say that. So let's assume this is the percentage, and of course the worth for the membership value. Okay. So we have inadequate, marginal here, and adequate. I say we need to have a uh, lot uh, uh, and there is an abrupt change from uh, one membership value to the next, so you can see the value change here. The same comment for marginal and for adequate. This is the first input. The second input uh, we've mentioned is project staffing. So, in this case, the uh, input linguistic variable is project staffing, and the values can take on simply to small and large. So, similarly, we need to have a membership function for it. Again, project staffing here, the x axis you can see uh, would be percentage, so this is 0%, 10%, 20%, 200%. And based on, you can always normalize and get a percentage to a given nominal value. And the wax, of course, is again from zero to one to be able to assess the degree of membership of a given value. So for small here, we can find, for example, if it is below 30%, it's definitely small. And then as you transit from this 30% high value, you have a smooth transition. Same thing for large now. If you are above, uh, so this one would be uh, 60%, but definitely large. But below it, you start having a gradual fall. So you've seen that uh, as well. So once you define your input membership functions, so you need to have an output membership function uh, for your level of risk. Okay. So how did we define the output membership function in this case? Let's have a look. So in this case, your project risk, which is the output, uh, again is being uh, assessed from a scale of percentage from zero to hundred percent here. And of course your membership function is going to be arranging from a value of zero to or one in this case. So we are giving now for this output linguistic variable project risk, we're having three values, low, normal, and high. So you can see here we have membership functions for low, for normal, and high. So that's it, you are being able to define two inputs, their membership functions, and one output and its membership function. Now, what remains to be done, of course, is the rule set to be able to relate your input to output. So let's look at the rule sets that have been used in this case. So the rules, 
So uh, the first rule is if project funding is adequate or project staffing is more, then risk is low. Yep. And the second rule set is if project funding is marginal and project staffing is large, then risk is normal. Whereas if the project funding is inadequate, then the risk is high. So in this third case here, you can see you're not even considering staffing. The moment your project funding is inadequate, the risk becomes high, irrespective of the project staffing. Now, uh, one comment about setting the rules, like I said earlier, it's in this case here, if it's not our field as such, you would of course get these rules from people who are involved in assessing risk in the project. Now we know a first logic is used uh, extensive in different fields. This one, of course, or the one we're looking at is risk assessment. It's used in many other fields. We all have constant engineering application of controlling systems. Uh, it's also used in areas for maintenance, in our financial modeling, in financial risk assessment, in various fields. So as part of the assignment, remember, you have to uh, do a review of a given uh, machine intelligence tool. So if you are reviewing uh, the applications for fuzzy objects, you will definitely come a whole range of applications. Yep. So again, these rules here will be set from an expert uh, who is uh, well versed in this field. So again, the small cap we've been able to set. Uh, we've been to identify first inputs as project funding and project staffing. We're able to give values to these to input linguistic variables and we have been able to map the membership functions and the same thing for the output which is project risk we have been able to define the values for it which are low normal and high risk and now we have been able to set the rules once you've done that it's straightforward now to be able to start actually calculating the output for the set for given input conditions so in this case what we're saying is suppose our input as follows so project funding is 35 percent and project staffing is 60 percent yep so hard. what you do now of course when the project funding is 35 percent so project funding is 35 percent from these membership functions so here's not very very uh, accurate to show you but what we do now is be able to calculate for 35 percent of project funding what are the values for inadequate marginal and adequate so this can be done on a graph paper or by calculating the equations of these membership functions and then just replacing 35. in this case i'm important in this particular article in this particular document it's saying here uh, for 35 percent project funding we are getting a membership value for a uh, funding inadequate of 05 for the uh, same 35 percent we're getting a membership value for funding margin of 02 and in the funding adequate here for 35 percent you can clearly see it is zero so let's just take these values and view them yeah so the next thing now of course we also mentioned the second input is project staffing is 60 percent so for 60 percent we have to get evaluate the values so project staffing had two values small and large for 60 percent we're getting the membership value for staffing small as port one and for uh, staffing large at a 60 percent value is point seven once you have these values defined here or the two input variables, the membership values, then you're able to use now this rule set to calculate your output that we've done. So the first one here would be the uh, membership value for output low. It's going to be your project funding adequate or project staffing is small. So we know O-ring means maximum. So we're going to take the maximum value we obtained for adequate and the value obtained for small. So this is what we're going to do next. Yep, so this is what we're doing here. You know, we're evaluating rule number one, which you just seen. So we do the maximum value of these two, and we got the value port one for risk is low. Then we evaluate the second rule here, which is saying uh, is, is what's defining the output value of risk is normal, which is project funding is marginal, and so you have the operation N here, which means minimum. This is why we're doing minimum here. So basically, you can take the minimum value between membership values of project funding marginal and project staffing large. This is what we're doing here. This had to be, so you can see here, there's a mistake uh, in the sheet clearly here. So you have to be a minimum, and then you are taking minimum value here. So it's maximum value here, so minimum value. So we are sort of correcting my document. So it's the minimum value. 
the minimum between port two and port seven. So indeed, the way that port two is coming, so it's just uh, uh, bear that in mind. Project funding marginal. The project funding marginal got port two. Yeah, so this is where this port is coming from, and then. We have to find project staffing large. So let's go to project staffing. Project staffing large, we've got port seven. So it's the minimum between port two and port seven, and that's port two. So again, this is not a maximum, yes, a minimum. Okay. And uh, there's a second way to find it here, which we're not using. We're using the maximum minimum operations. Right? So the third rule was if project funding is inadequate and risk is high. So in this case, we're just simply saying risk is high is simply equals to membership for project funding inadequate so if you go up here we find membership value for uh, funding inadequate is 0.5 okay so based on rule three here we're simply saying here your uh a value for your output high is simply equals to 0.5 so what you have here so based on these values here so what we're getting for your output uh, linguistic variables for the three values low, normal, and high are as follows by evaluating the group set, which we've done earlier. So, risk low now, we have to map these values to your output numbers function. So, we've got risk low. So, this was your output numbers function. So, for low here, we've got uh, a value of one. Okay. And then risk normal here, we're getting value of point 0.2. Yeah. And then we find uh, high is 0.5. Yep, so high here is 0.5. This is what we have overall. Again, you can see a small mistake here with uh, what you're seeing below is 0.1. It should have a 0.1 here, but in the graph down here where we are sort of consolidating everything, it is actually right. So 0.1 for you, and then 0.2 for normal, and then 0.5 for high. Now, once you have this output, which is called a falsified output, you would have now to convert this to diversify it. To obtain a cost pattern. So basically, you want to get a value saying what the project risk based on all this assessment. The diversification process works as follows. So this is the approximate method we use. You could have used integration. So I would say it's a good experience for you to try it once if you want to find. So this would be an integration here of product of uh, the mu a times x divided by some is here to be integration of mu x, which can be given as a graph, but this example is the approximate method, which we've seen earlier. The different methods are discussed here, which we looked at earlier. But if you wanted to use the uh, approximate method to find the uh, centroid of the area, the curve, the center of gravity, if you want, the centroid method, uh, we have now to find a discrete value. So if we start with zero, we find point one. So you have to take zero, which is uh, actually having a non zero membership. And then let's say you take intervals of 10 now. So 10 is going to be point one, 20 point one, 30 is you get point two, 40 you get point two, 50 you get point two as well, 60 point two, 70 seems to be a bit tight. So it, in this case, what they have taken here, they have taken point five, but if you want to make sure you're taking the right value, you would just evaluate at what point actually this line here. So you can find this equation. So this is 60, 0, and this is 81. So you can find the equation of this line and find what point this line actually reaches a value of 0.5. If it is 70, that's fine, but it seems quite tight here. But this case, I've taken 70 point five, but you can access it. Uh, you can recall in the previous example I've done on air conditioning system we did that we found the equation line and found at what point is actually uh, meeting this horizontal line here so in this case they have actually taken 73.5 so once you have all the points it's just a question now of taking in the numerator the product of your membership value with the x values yeah in this case your risk and then dividing by the sum of memberships so in this case we get the value of 67.4 percent this would be your Risk that's going to report for this example. So, uh, again, example outside of level engineering, but I think it very well illustrates the different steps we've said identification of inputs and outputs, defining your membership functions both for the inputs and your outputs. So, for that, you have to find the values for the different linguistic variables be for your input and your output. Once you've done that, you have to see the rule set, then you're ready to start actually processing crisp values in this case and then from crisp values you can obtain the first file output, you diversify and then that's it. 
I hope this has been, it's been helpful for you. And uh, I'll be showing our course with late, with further videos now for further chapters on our machine intelligence course. The next one is going to be on uh, introduction to artificial intelligence and artificial neural networks specifically. Yep. So uh, wait for the videos. Thank you.